breaking some of the rules of form because it suits what you're writing, then you do that. Um, and then, you know, you can also go the route of just once you've learned it. I, once I learned form, I never went back to it. Um, Sonnets and... Yeah, I mean, any, you know, learning I am at pentameter, learning, you know... That's what I was going to uh, say. Uh, what about know, haiku? Even, <laughs> You know, I don't I'm know. I've never. I this. They could be fun. <laughs> I. I just. I, I. There's something about the constriction of that that just doesn't. Again, it doesn't lend itself to to the kind of writing that I do, and that you know it was fine. I valued. I valued having to put some shape to something mm-hmm. just to show that I could, and then to never use it again was fine for me. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, it's there. Mm-hmm. You learned it. You know what it well, like you measure can, and rhythm, and yeah. you've thought about it and analyzed it and broken it down. You're probably applying it in subconscious ways, don't I you don't think? I don't think so. No? no. No, I think that if I want to use it, then I have it there as something to call back to. Okay. Like if I want to slip something in, you know, stylistically, I can do it. But then I feel like it's also much more subtle. I don't... I don't write with the intent of of making it fit that. It's like, oh, it would be kind of cool to kind of slip this illusion in here, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, it's like um, even though even some of my favorite, I guess, quote unquote, experimental poets had some form involved, like E.E. E. Cummings definitely had some, you know, he had some um, formic parts to his writing but you would never know it um just from reading it it almost sounded like all like stream of conscious sort of thing but but if you look at it on the page you realize there must have been some rules at play don't you think because some of those poems i'm thinking of the very short ones have mm-hmm. a lot of symmetry you can almost them, hold them up to the light and trace them yeah one over another yeah um I don't know. It's it's something where if it, it's like it's something that I like having as a tool to call back to. So if I am reading a collection of poetry and suddenly, you know, it'll it something will click in my head where I'm like, "Oh, they're using they're using this form or other or whatever." Right. Um, you know, they're they're they are experimenting with a villanelle kind of form or something. And so I don't know. I I did find that it almost this well the same the same thing about it i think appealed to me that um uh having a lot of trivia knowledge appeals to me okay you know because i can just <laughs> you're like it's there it i can draw from it yeah if i need to yeah to. exactly that's funny oh did i tell you my sister and i were gonna go beyond let's make a deal like we had our oh, tickets no. lined up and everything but then it's back to school season so she was like oh my kids have to go back and then in, gotta- in your quest for yeah. for game show stardom exactly <laughs> yeah well they opened up a bunch of additional tickets for the rest of august and september so we might still go yeah but- yeah, and then I think I might be in the audience for Will Fortune <laughs> before the year is over. Oh yeah, yeah. You but sent the your audition tape or something. Right? I do every year. Yeah, I okay. haven't gotten a call back, but I'll keep trying. <laughs> and then the Jeopardy test is an annual thing too. Mm-hmm. See, these are all the things I have Google Alerts set up for. So, gotcha. so don't worry about me. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> all but, right. Yeah. What else is new? What else have you seen or heard or read lately? Mm, I'm still reading. I, well, I I need to finish that REM book this week because I'm interviewing the guy on Saturday. But then oh, I also cool. started reading um, a book by Dean Wareham, who um, his like best known projects are Galaxy 500 and uh, Luna. No, sorry. Okay, very like <laughs> indie pop kind of thing. Like, oh, Luna, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, Luna. Of course, that's like a college radio. Right. Yeah. So before that was Galaxy Five Hundred, and that okay. was like at the very forefront of the whole shoegaze thing. Yeah, like, you know, My Bloody Valentine. Okay, you're taking and, me back. <laughs> and that kind of of thing. They were they were kind of progenitors of that. And um, 
he has a book called Black Postcards, which is really good so far, but I was just trying to read to get to the point where he starts talking about the Galaxy 500 albums because I'm going to record the, about those with Ashley Neff Tool for, um, for Album Infinitum. Those are oh, the next right albums on. I'm going to do. Ashley Neff Tool has been like all over the place. Did you see the New Times last week when they did the mm-hmm. yeah, yeah Arizona songs? <laughs> He's always doing something. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. Whether it's that or Space 55. Yep. Or, yeah. Yeah, um, and then Friday I'm going to see Clexco and Iron and Wine. Finally, you've had that ticket up there for weeks. I have. Well, <laughs> so I don't forget it. It's like yeah. I see it every day on the way out. I'm like, oh, yeah, don't plan Aww. anything for that night because you have that ticket. That'll be good. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward. The new album is really good. I like it a lot. Yeah. Um, it's, it's if I mean, if you like Iron and Wine and you like Clexico, then it's I a do. great album. Both um, accounts. So I, I highly recommend that. Um, all I'm thinking of right now, though, is the name of the EP they first put out a long time ago. Who, Iron and Wine? And and Calexico, yeah. They did one called In the Rains. Um, and I'm trying to remember what the name of... I could just get the damn record. I mean, you have this giant catalog. You could just dig through it. There it is. Years to Burn, that's what it's called. Yeah. yeah. Years to Burn. Very good. I highly right recommend on. that one too. So Um And I think that's it, honestly. Yeah, there's there's can't stuff think of anything on my radar. I going on down the road, but cover the crescent and they were covering I went to that. Leonard Cohen. That was fantastic. I bet it was everybody. It was said so. really, really good. Damn. Um, it was the same night as the Lydia lunch thing at at uh, Valley Bar, which I wanted to go to also, but you know you can't go to two things. So <laughs> at least I haven't found a way to yet. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I was glad I went to the Cover the Crescent one. It was really, it was really outstanding. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, rest in peace, Leonard Cohen. Mm-hmm. He was a good one. Um, I don't know. There will be fall concerts. Coming yeah, up. I know that there's a whole bunch of stuff. I'm hoping that I'll get to interview some people that are coming through. We'll see. And you're going to be, are you going to have time to do here. anything? I'm not traveling again for a while, probably not till this fall. Well, the so semester be, just started, right? The semester so. just started. Yeah, I am very busy. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> yeah, you have um, no time. You can't do anything. <laughs> I don't really have a lot of time. I could do this podcast. <laughs> Every other Tuesday, so that's a good thing. And then, do you still feel like everyone has a podcast? Yes. Yeah. Well, and just more and more people have podcasts. <laughs> yeah. um, which doesn't help when you're trying to, to get gain an people audience to listen. for one. But, um, uh, mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to continue. It also doesn't help hard. that that uh, that we don't promote this one very Right. Well. I know. Like, Reno 911, I've quoted it before, but they, there was an episode where they're like, we aim to try. <laughs> <laughs> I I do so. Still, my mid year resolution. Maybe it'll go better. All right. I don't know. I I do I do put something out there when it first posts, but I'm I'm bad at following up on everything. So, do you have anything else to plug? Are you doing storytelling or readings? No, no, I don't think so. Um, Barflies has a new thing. I just got an email. They have this thing called Fly Paper where they're taking a lot of the different events that they do collectively and they're just going to, hmm. I guess, blast that out. Oh, cool. Um, nice. They, they have a giant network. They do. I'll do a Barflies someday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, me once I had to say no. I wouldn't, I wouldn't <laughs> mind getting asked to do more stuff. That would be yeah. fine. But I also don't, I don't put myself much out there much for it. It's also probably because I haven't been writing a whole lot. But okay. That'll that'll I'm 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 working to to try to make that change. So, you, you know what I mean, I'm not going to get any more time than than I have, so I just have to carve something out of it. That's true. Uh back when I was in graduate school working on my MFA, I had an advisor who told me cuz I was saying to her, you know, Oh, well, when in my life, when I had to always work full time, it was hard to find the time to write. But at that time, I wasn't working full time. I was working mm-hmm. maybe part time at best, and I was a freelancer. So she said, you need to make a daily writing habit. Mm-hmm. It was an assignment, actually. 
And so for like six months, I would get up in the morning and I would write, which is like so out of my habits. That's like yeah. so out of my practice. I can't do it because I'm already up at three in the morning. Well, yeah, you yeah. get up super early. Um, but just if you can carve out that time and commit to yeah. it. Yeah, that's, well, that's the it's thing. It's so beautiful. It's like yours. That time is yours. I've decided that just like during the weeks now, I'm going to go ahead and... Um, I'm going to start um, uh, just, I don't know, after I get home, maybe I'll take a little nap or something, whatever, do my workout or run or whatever, and then make myself go out afterwards and spend like an hour or two before. Not a bad idea. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just before exhausted. you're too exhausted. Yeah. All right. Is that a good place for us to wrap it up? I think so. From Punxsutawney, this is Phil. I, yeah. <laughs> fuck you, San Diego. Um, <laughs> uh, I'll see you when the next Avengers movie comes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. There are plenty of podcasts that don't have good sign off. So okay. see you. This has been a Hoon Waddle production. If you enjoyed this podcast, why not check out one of our other fine podcasts available from hootandwaddle.com, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or any number of podcast apps. If you'd like to support Hoot and Waddle and get access to an exclusive member-only podcast, receive discounts on merch, and more, go to patreon.com forward slash hootandwaddle. Waddle.